and now it's back. It's gone, and it's back, and now it's gone, and it's back. You need to reconnect stream software. Go ahead and reconnect for me. There you go. Okay. That's good. Oh, brother. Dude, O-Codes in Austin. I don't even know if I'm streaming, but thanks for the follows. <sighs> Am I streaming? I don't even know. The internet's like, am I up? Am I down? I don't know. It's like DOS. There you go. Now it's reconnected over there. Oh, brother. Time Warner. Time Wartner. <sighs> I never have problems with this. I never have. I'm about to get two connections and use both of them at once. That gets on my nerves. That gets on my nerves. Where did I leave off? I don't even know. <laughs> I don't even know where it would be off. I'm streaming. Thanks, O-Codes. <sighs> so anyways, continuing on until the next time this drops. I've only got about an hour and a half left to go, so... <sighs> this better get picked up. That's totally annoying. I can do all sorts of wacky stuff on my stream, right? I can be as unprofessional as I like to be. I can eat on stream. I can configure things on stream. Like, I don't... That, that stuff doesn't get to me. But internet connections... Okay, and you're not even going to refresh, are you? Internet connections that keep drying... That is a problem. That is a problem. I don't care when it comes to being unprofessional about some sort of stuff. I was saying what mod you want that doesn't exist. Ah! On the fly, center of mass, center of lift, center of gravity, and what was the other one I said? Oh, like a checklist of things to do, like a new player helper, right? What are the lights to your right? That's a window. There's a window back there. That's what it is. Everybody keeps asking. Uh, how you wanted a beginner mod? Yeah, thank you. Yes, I was talking about a mod that's like a very simple little window that says, you know, here's your launch checklist. You should be doing this. 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 Um, that would be an awesome mod, and it seems like it would be really easy. Like a configurable, like maybe like an XML file, or something like that, that, uh, you could configure, and it would, like, check some variable, like altitude or speed or something like that, altitude, speed, pitch, whatever, and if you were meeting it, I swear, okay, no, that's Windows telling me that I need to install. Eh, eh, four hours, postpone, go away. There's already a checklist mod. Oh, but Adelaide doesn't do what I want. It doesn't do what I want. Right? Because I want something that's just easy getting into orbit sort of thing. Stream class is much sad. Dude, Professor M, me too. In-flight RC at build aid would do the trick. Yes, Cantab, I agree. Yes, that's what I was looking for. Not a checklist to make sure you have the stuff on your rocket, right? The, the Werner von Braun helper or whatever. Yeah, they're for the VAB battle. I want one that's like for new people that's like, it, it could be like a KSA boot camp mod or something that's like, here's what you should be doing now. Boop, 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 right? Bottom of stream chat is missing, really? Ow, brother. I'm just not too worried about that right now. There's just, Crassio, yeah, you're right. Nope, okay, other way direction. There we go. Ones that says throttle up, panel locks, SAS engaged. One, two, three, space. That's backwards having my fun. Three, two, one, space is how it goes. I just want something easier to get into orbit. <laughs> no, Nubius, I want a checklist that, uh, it's basically like a cheat sheet that tells you what you should be doing at the time. It's more informational than anything else. Uh, more informational. A mod that remade the Mark III cockpit. Let's do this. Somebody was asking at the beginning of the stream, pardon me because I don't, I don't remember, I didn't write it down. Somebody was asking about ways to land. Yeah, I don't want MechJeb. MechJeb is too confusing for new players. I just want that something that says, like, New player, you should be going straight up until 10, and then you should be turning, and then you should make your pitch this. And there could be, like, an easy mode and an advanced mode and whatever. Um, you could almost, like, level up your launch skills or your landing skills or whatever. That'd be great if there was, like, a text file that you could configure or something like that, right? Um, and you could put in XML or whatever. It wouldn't have to be XML, I guess. Nobody uses that anymore. But you could configure something that said, like, when you're doing this, activate this screen and check your speed at this altitude and check your this at that altitude. Deluzio, what's up? And Outlaw, what's up? 
doing a help desk. I'm just answering some user questions. I think I actually need to fly some rockets, though. Maybe we should fly some rockets. Let's just go uh, resume save and go over to a boot camp save and see what we've got. There we go. How did I get 16 flights on this? And uh, just so you know, there are internet issues imminent. In internet issues imminent. So if something goes on with the internet, it's totally my fault. What is that? Oh, the Eve Lander debris. Nice. Ah, yes, there we go. Most efficient deorbiting into a planet. That was you. If Yes, yes, yes. That is it. Uh, Bjorn, if you're in the VAB, look, I'll show you right quick. That's a really quick one. Yeah, Crassio, that is a good idea as well. The in-game tutorial system right now is just not cutting it. Just not cutting it. And then, Mona Bobby, let me show him how to do this, and then I will do this. We can knock that off in an afternoon. That alliteration, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> ah, yes. A DOS AI that passes the Turing test. Yes! Cybertech and Adel join forces to program a Kerbal Space Program AI. <laughs> um... The question was from Bjorn Magison. Check it out. A key binding to delete parts. You know that you can delete parts by dragging them over here, right? So if you have a part and you want to get rid of it, you can grab it and drag it over here. Now, if I have a part, delete doesn't do anything if I don't have it selected. If I have it selected, backspace doesn't do it. Delete will actually do it. I've never used that before. Now, I learned something today. So if you've got a part in the VAB and you're putting a rocket together, you still have to grab a hold of it like this so that it goes ghost mode, right? But you can press delete on your keyboard to get rid of it. Hmm. I did not know that. Normally, I just toss stuff over here to the side, and if you drop it down there, it gets deleted. But you can apparently ghost mode it, pick it up, and hit delete, and it'll be deleted. That's actually really useful. Sweet. Um, let me do this. All right. Da -da 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 -da. Ah, yes. Oh, dude, dude, dude. Ilaren or Laren with three L's or L how many L's there are there? Um, you are welcome to post links to KSP related content in my channel. You're cool. Thanks for coming to the help desk. You are welcome to post those links. Mechadas. Oh, we should totally call it Mechadas. <laughs> Couldn't find the rolling bin of science. Um, Man on fire. Ask that question again in a second. It opens the page it's on. Really? If you control click a part. Really? I didn't know that either. Oh, that's pretty helpful. Would it be helpful? I mean, eh, I'll, I'll see if I can remember that. I'll see if I can remember that. Man, if I remember that question, here's what we're going to do. Here's what we're going to do. Mechadas. <laughs> Mechadas. <laughs> oh, brother. <laughs> Mech DOS. DOS that sits there and screams boot camp instructions in your ear as you try to go to orbit. Anyways, out of the VAB. My next question was about landing. Yeah, you learn something new every day. You're exa I, learned some I learned two things today. Helpful to compare parts for your boot camp. What would be helpful? Huh. Clippy. <laughs> Clippy DOS. <laughs> no, let's not call it that. So let me come over here. Do I have anything, anything in orbit around the moon? I do not. What is this? What size asteroid is this that's coming by in this polar orbit? There's an asteroid we have. Is this the free E? No, that's a C. But that's about to leave. Hmm. Interesting. Well, apparently we're going to have to get something on the moon right quick. We're going to have to get something in moon or orbit, so let's do that. Megdas! Hiss! No, then we'll set it up so that Megjeb and Mechdos fight. We'll like all those Rock'em Sock'em robots sort of things. <laughs> I apparently need to get something in orbit around the moon, so let's go do that right quick. Luckily, I should have some craft in here since it's boot camp. I should have my load. I should have my KS-8 boot mooner lander. Is my uh, mooner lander trainer in here? Yeah, my trainer Mark II. Excellent day. If you want to download the Moon Lander Mark II, this is something that I use in boot camps. Um, it is a very simple craft to get you landing on the moon. You can totally download it by getting it right here at the craft link. Go over there. This is the Mark II. Oh, come on. There you go. I mean, hold shift. Yeah, I knew that one, Bremer. I knew that one. Um, I can totally do that. I did not know about control clicking, opening up that tank. Now, if only it would highlight the part for you. 
say we don't go. Building specs, wow. That's hardcore. <laughs> Dave Ryder, that's a little bit much. I want it to be really simple. I still want people to think. I don't want it to be something. Um, I don't want it to be something that would uh, basically hold their hand too much. I just want it to be something that helps new players out. You know? Oh, I have game music and chip tunes. Thank you. Oh, Code Zubaski. Thanks for the follows, guys. We're doing Kerbal Help Desk. This is my Mooner Trainer. It has 7,000 7, meters per second of atmospheric Delta V. Let's go ahead and launch this puppy. Let me see if I have it in here. Come on, girly. And I'll fix the chip tunes right now, Cantab. Thank you for doing that. I need like a stream mod that's like Das. Dude, are you displaying Skype on your monitor? <laughs> okay, no. Make sure that's not there. Das, have you changed the stream title? Okay, good. Das, <laughs> it should like flash up things. Drink. All right. Das, if you can see all the Delta V info from Engineer, then what is the transfer planner for? Ooh, Naka Flaka. That it tells you how much you actually need in order to get to the destination that you're going to. Engineer just tells you how much you have. It's like your budget versus your what you're going to spend right now, I guess. Your your long to your strategic versus your tactical budget, I guess. Yeah, there you go. Cantab's on top of it there. Dude, Cantab, thanks for helping out. You're always a good help in my channel. Let's get to this to the moon right quick. Who's going? Jay McNarley, it wouldn't be an ideal gravity turn. It would be a getting to orbit for beginners sort of thing, really. Um, it wouldn't be the most efficient or anything like that. It would just be like, hey, you want to get to your first orbit? Here, let this mod repeat to you the things that I taught you in boot camp. Um, that would be really freaking cool. That would be really freaking cool. Anyways, we need to do this. We need to do this. Yes! Yeah, Tesla Max. That's actually a really good idea. That's an excellent idea. Let's do this. Bing! Who is it? Gav! <laughs> You're already on a mission somewhere, aren't you, Gav? We've already used you. We've already used you. I'm pretty sure. I'm almost positive. Didn't you go someplace important? Adel? <laughs> Are you not in this save, maybe? Hmm. I don't see you in this save. Really? Who knew? <laughs> Who knew? Let's get somebody else. Winner. Let's get somebody else. And the winner is somebody new. Come on, Nightbot. Come on, Nightbot. Cantab. I don't think I've... I don't think Cantab's in there. I don't think, dude, Crafty Gamer, the nav ball is big so that people can see the nav ball on the screen. Cantab. <laughs> Have you gone anywhere? I don't know. You're on one of the stations already. Really? You're on one of the stations already. All right. Well, I'll keep picking until I pick somebody who hasn't done it. And the winner is Nightbot. <laughs> Let's see here. You need a mod to track where you stored all your viewers in orbit. Let's see here. And the winner is... Here you go, Ilarin. That actually shows me it was an eye. And this is actually great. Here we go. Let's put Ilarin in there. Create Kerbal. Hadrick. Nope. Your name is Ilarin. Apply. Command pod. Remove. Tarling. Oh, you were the last one picked. Add alarm into the capsule here. Let's go out and do a landing. Let us go out and do a landing on the moon. <laughs> Delete that. Scroll in. Everything good. What's up, Ian Epic? Throttle up. Press Z. Panel lock. Click up there. SAS engaged. Press T. Three, two, one. Ilarin. Space. Get there. Engineer, by the way. All right, cool. Mordini15, welcome to the channel. We're doing a help desk right now. We're doing a help desk right now. <laughs> Threaten Cybertech with a pizza. A very crispy, sharp pizza. You're going to the moon. You are, Lauren. Thank you for coming to the help desk. Thanks for the follow, and thanks for asking questions. That's what I do at the help desk. I answer people's questions. We need to clean that up at some point. <laughs> this is where we crash the Eve return ship. <laughs> good times, good times. One can hope. Casper VLD, I found your lack of faith disturbing. I'm going to send you to Eve and strand you there. I'm going to send you to Eve with this rocket. <laughs> Let's see if I can land. All right, so we're just go straight up with a rocket. It's interesting. Acceleration. <laughs> we just have that. 
We are going to go straight up till we hit 10k. Again, if you want to download this, if you want to download this, we are going to go ahead and start our pitch maneuver at 10k. So when I get to 10 kilometers, I'm going to start pressing D. Do I have that open? Yes, I do. I'm going to start pressing D. I'm going to pitch this thing over. This is for stock arrow. This is for new players. This is not for near and far and that sort of stuff. But I am going to start my pitch maneuver. And right about the time that I get up to 20k, I want to be pointed 45 degrees. So there we go. Ah, yes. So fresh and so clean. That looks good. These stages are going to run out. This is an onion stage. This is an onion stage rocket where the outer tanks are feeding the inner tanks. So these inner tanks are still full. That way you get to use that central core engine, but not ditch it when you are done with the outer tanks. So now I can ditch the outer tanks, and I need to turn and burn. Right like that. We don't need those pieces anymore. That's not the core left cross. That is the angry triangle. <laughs> That is the angry triangle. So I'm going to burn right here just below the green ball. Just below the green ball until my apoapse gets up to about 80. If you don't have the engineer, first off, shame on you. But you can check it by pressing M and you can see your apoapse right like that. You could hover over that. You would see it. I'm going to keep burning like this until I get an apoapse of 80. 79, 80. Turn it off. There we go. Whoa, buddy. That's weird. <laughs> I didn't know you could do that. Next thing, you need to click on your Apple apps, you need to add a maneuver, you need to get rid of precise node, and you need to grab the green prograde ball and pull it. When the Apple app starts to run away from you, did you see how that Apple app started to run away? You need to hold down and bring it on home. Stupid Kerbal tricks. Continue dragging the green prograde marker until you get a flip like that. That's 95. You don't want that to be the case. You want to go backwards until they're about even. That's 80. By 80. Did you see how they started to move? When they start to move, that means they're going to change places. When they change places, that means they're about even. That is where you want to start that, finish that actually, so that you're circular. Then we're going to come back here. We're going to point the rocket down a little bit. Like this. It's going to be a 58 second burn. Let's half this old school style. Half of 58 is 25 plus 4, so 29 seconds. So when we get to 29 seconds, I am going to throttle up this rocket. 29 seconds. Node in. T minus 29. I moved it up so you could see it. Note in T minus 29 seconds. That is when I'm going to press Z, floor it basically, and go with the burn. 1043 meters per second. We've got 1121 in the tank. That's not too shabby. There's 29. Let's burn the rocket. Now you can see it. I can drink and we can all have a final time. What's up on the Hudson? How's it going? Yes, yes. I will continue burning like this. I am not used to this light. Wow, taking a day off streaming. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's not good. Anyways, I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm not going to leave this up here as orbital trash. I'm going to stop when my parry is right at 20. So basically, I'm going to stage when my parry apse is just above, just below 20, actually. Man, I don't know what the deal is, y'all. I apologize, though. I'm a little squinty today. 30, 20, 10, 20, 14, 15, 16. There we go. Stage it. And go ahead and accelerate until I get into orbit. Right like that. It's only going to cost me about 50 meters per second of delta V. Bing! But keeps my skies clean. And I like clean skies. So now what we've got on the rocket, we've got a lunar transfer stage that's bucking around at 1472. 1472. Columbus sailed the ocean blue. That's a weird mnemonic thingy. Plus, it's wrong because it was 1492. But 1472 in my lunar transfer stage, you only need about a thousand to get out there. This rocket has plenty of delta V. It's designed for new people to get to the moon. It's a lunar trainer. It's Mark II. I went through a couple iterations. But that right there, 81 by 78, good enough for government work. Let us find the moon. Ooh, look at that! Look at that, it's time to start burning right now. Look at that moonrise, that is beautiful. That is beautiful. All I need to do, all I need to do to get to the moon right now, when the moon is rising like that, is burn prograde. That is freaking beautiful, look at that. I'm just gonna point it right there in my prograde marker. I am going to go ahead and throttle it up, and we are gonna burn to the moon. We don't even need a maneuver node for this. We are just going to burn to the moon. Um, I will set some Kerbal Alarm Clocks. I saw that one come by. 
I saw that one come by, and I will set a Kerbal Alarm Clock thingy for you. I will do that for you. But I'm just going to burn Prograde right now, and I'm going to spend about 850 meters per second at Delta V. Come over to the map screen. Watch what's happening here. You can actually set the moon as your target. Ding, 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 ding. And just continue your burn. You will get a lunar orbit if you burn when the moon rises. Nah, I shouldn't say lunar orbit. You will get a lunar encounter if you burn when the moon rises. This is what I should actually say. Anyways, we're just going to burn some stuff out of this. And I will check chat while this burn happens. Let's see here. Did I miss anything? <laughs> there we go. I remember seeing that. Make Nightbot a Kerbal and crash him someplace. Okay. Threaten Cyber Tech with a pizza. I remember seeing that. Uh, what is your favorite part mod for KSP? Oh, codes. I don't really do part mods. I don't really do part mods. I don't. I wouldn't say that I have a favorite. I wouldn't say that I have a favorite right now. On the Hudson. I'll remember that one. Hey, Dust. Last night for the first time, I was able to landish on the moon, tipped over and landed on the side, but was able to spin and rotate like a 1980s breakdancer on cardboard. Kicked out the landing gear a few times until it was able to get off the ground. <laughs> <laughs> and get enough to stand straight. Engage S is it and landed it straight up. Nicely done, Cool Whip. Thanks for the report and good job, cadet, to you. Look at this. Bing! That is a Mooner encounter. In fact, that is a Mooner impact. That is a Mooner impact. Look at that little curly cue. <laughs> That's so cute. Look. Let's go. Focus view. That is definitely us running right into the moon. Now let's see what Burning Prograde would do. Ooh, that's not as good. I burned a little bit too much because I was reading chat. So I'm going to flip the rocket around. I got plenty of spare Delta V. I got 611 left in my transfer stage. And I'm going to burn a little retrograde here. And that is going to bring me... Bing! Right there. Into a pretty good Mooner flyby. Now, I want to be a little bit lower than that. So I'm going to burn ever so slightly Prograde. Ever so slightly Prograde. Until I get a... Oh, come on. There we go. 5,000. That looks good to me. I want it to be a little bit lower, but I'll fix that in post. Whenever I get into the moon, I will fix that. And I will show you, Mona Bobby, the most efficient way to do this landing. I will show you. Yeah, we don't need to do a home and transfer or anything. It's all good to go. Um, yeah, this is not quite a home and transfer. This is not quite a home and transfer, but it doesn't matter because the rocket's overbuilt. This is just the easiest way to get to the moon. Taters McBiscuit! You can totally do that. You can totally just burn whenever the moon is rising towards your prograde, and you will get there. Shaving the monkey. You're not even kidding. Yeah, this is exactly the way I want this, because somebody asked me what the most efficient way to get to the moon was, and I will show you. And I think the difference, this isn't exactly a home and transfer because the ideal home, and, maybe it's an ideal home and transfer, right? Is leaving at one side and doing one half circle, one half circle. Instead of meeting it earlier or later or something like that, it's doing one half circle. That's, I think, an ideal home and transfer, we could call it. Anyways, Kerbal Alarm Clock. Somebody asked me a question about Kerbal Alarm Clock. I should really be posting the questions over there. In fact, let me do this right now. Find... Uh, alarm, I think. There we go. Wait, no, 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 don't scroll my chat. I'm trying to find things. Zubaski. Oh, when you try to install it, it crashes the game. That's not the question. <laughs> there we go. This is for Naka Flocka. I think you can add some nodes with Kerbal Alarm Clock, too. Naka Flocka, listen up. I'm going to do Kerbal Alarm Clock for you right here. I'm going to do Kerbal Alarm Clock. So, I'm going to click on Kerbal Alarm Clock up here in Blizzy's toolbar. Bing! It opens up. I've got Kerbal Alarm Clock. It's pretty straightforward. All I have to do is click Add. I apparently need to update it too. When I click Add, Kerbal Alarm Clock figures out what the next important thing in the life of my rocket is. In this case, it is going to be the SOI change from Kerbin to the moon. From Kerbin to the moon. Now check this out. If I had, instead of going from Kerbin to the moon, if I had a node somewhere out here that was like, dude, Dust, do something else. Go retrograde around the moon. <laughs> or something like that, right? If I wanted to put a node up here to change it into a retrograde orbit instead, I just added some delta V. If I go to Kerbal Alarm Clock and I click, oh, nope, not add, go away, take out Kerbal Alarm Clock, put it back. If I did that, it would see automatically that the next important thing in the life of my rocket is that node. 
instead of the Mooner SOI change. It automatically figured that out, and why? If you look at this, all this trash I have on the screen, I would be, let's go back to my rocket, there we go. I would be flying along this orbit. The first thing I would come to would be the maneuver node. Kerbal Alarm Clock realizes that and it says, hey, I'm gonna make a maneuver node alarm clock for you. And if I click add alarm, that is the amount of time to that maneuver node. In fact, a cool trick, if you just want to put an alarm somewhere along your orbit, you don't even care about the maneuver node, you can then come over here, right click on the node and delete it. You'll still have the alarm. I do this all the time when I'm doing atmospheric re-entries. I'll put an alarm right before I re-enter the atmosphere. I'll put a node there, I'll set an alarm for that node, then I'll delete the node, because I don't really need the node, I just need the alarm at a specific point in the orbit, and that'll work just fine. Um, if I were to come over here and delete this alarm, see, you can click on the X to delete it, if I delete the alarm and I click Add again, you'll see since that node is no longer there, the next important thing in the life of my rocket is my SOI change. There it is. A couple other things you can do from here, you can set the margin, you can have the alarm go off an hour or a minute or 20 seconds or something like that before the alarm. So I'm actually going to set this to like 20 seconds or something like that. I'll set it to 0 minutes and 20 seconds before the SOI change, and I'm going to click Add, like that. So you see, there's a lot of different things that I can add on those alarms. I can just do a raw time alarm. I use these for interplanetary transfers. So if I want to go to an interplanetary destination, and I need my departure date to be, you know, year 3, day 256 or something, like the transfer window planner tells me, I could come over here and I could type in a date, year 3, day 265, or whatever. I could change it to whatever I wanted to. A time interval, if for some reason I just wanted to wait uh, 100 days or something like that, I could do that. That's useful if you're running an life support, an, a life support mod, not an, a life support mod, right? If you're running a life support mod and you know that your life support is going to run out at a certain date or run out after 100 days from today, that is what you could do. You could totally go in here, you could say, time interval, 100 days from now, these guys are going to need to be resupplied because at 120 days, 150 days, they're going to die of starvation and lack of snacks. You could set that up. You could also do, you could also, oh, wow, well, I just deleted my SOI alarm. <laughs> Let's put it back right quick. Zero and 20 seconds. I could have it just do a message. I could have it kill the warp, or I could have it pause the game. Those are just tricks. You could actually do this, so if you wanted to do SOI, I could do SOI, you could change the name of it. That's useful if you have multiple alarms on a certain craft. Um, you could do closest target distance, you could do ascending descending nodes, you could do apoaps periaps, you could do transfer windows. I don't really use the transfer windows as much. I find that it's a very wide window. Maybe it's good for like long-term planning. I really use the transfer window calculator because the transfer window planner right here, I don't think that it's as useful as the actual transfer window planner. So I, I do stick to that. Now you can always set an alarm for when you're supposed to do your burn or whatever. But uh, anything else about Kerbal Alarm Clock? I should update mine. <laughs> I should totally update mine. Yeah, check version now. No, don't need to do that. Uh, that minimizes and maximizes it. Anything else? I think I covered it pretty well. I think I covered it pretty well. Let's see here. Did I miss anything else? Shaving the monkey. Okay, I remember seeing that. Early stream. Yeah, I do have an early stream. How did you gain all your knowledge for KSP? I just played it. I mean, I like this stuff. I love figuring out stuff. On the Hudson, I think my biggest asset is being able to transfer technical things on technical speak. Right? That's what I kind of do, and I have a lot of experience doing that. Um, so maybe it seems like I know more than I do just because I'm able to explain the technical concepts in less technical terms, so it makes it more open for more people. Um, that's kind of my, uh, that's kind of my strength, I think. But there are definitely people who are a lot smarter in KSP than me. I just know how to talk about KSP, I think. Das, will you slingshot tutorials? Slingshot tutorials. We did one of those last week, Outlaw, so I don't think I'm going to do one of those this week. Um, we did a gravity slingshot last week, and so maybe it'll be next week. I try to alternate weeks on my topics. Did you miss me yesterday? Sure, Snuggly Squid, you missed me. One of your past streams, you mentioned Alarm Clock had a few bugs or glitches or something that did weirdness to your game. I can't remember that. Maybe? Hepburn, Mordini, and Owl Metal. <laughs> is that like that owl from A Wizard of Oz 2, the little clockwork owl she kept having to line up? Or is that like Owl Metal, like, <laughs> like rocking out sort of Owl Metal style? Tell me what your name means. Inquiring minds want to know. Mono Bobby, I can't think of anything in Alarm Clock right now that's... Oh, no! Oh, we were talking about, uh... Maybe it was Alarm Clock that was doing the control lock. 
And Unseeing Whale would be the best person to ask about that. Huh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, hmm. I think, uh, I don't think that there's anything, I wouldn't uninstall Alarm Clock because of any bugs or glitches. We were, th we were theorizing that maybe it was the cause for one bug that I had run into, but I wouldn't uninstall it for that. The bug is so random and, and odd, and there's no proof that it's even Alarm Clock doing that. Um, yeah, a lot of people doing awesome things. Can tab, you can also configure Carbon Alarm Clock to automatically add alarms. Yes, that is correct. Let's see here. It has automatic ones. Yeah, Rian Wolf, it does. It does. You can actually have it come in here to Alarm Clock, go to the settings, and tell it to... Where is it at? Aha! Nope, not that one. Detect and add alarms for SOI changes. You can have it automatically do that. Exclude EVA Kerbals from Auto Alarm. Nice. <laughs> So you can do that, and there's also detect and add alarm for maneuver nodes. So you can actually save those two different things. You can set those two settings, and it'll add, automatically do it for maneuver nodes or SRI changes. Good thing. I usually don't do that, so I can show it on the screen, right? Alphonic and Lustful. Welcome to the stream. I'm Das Valdez, doing a Kerbal Space Academy help desk right now. Answering some user questions. Going out to the moon. You know how it is. Uh, yeah. So, I usually don't have those things set just so that I can show it off a little bit and talk through it as I add the alarms. But you can actually have it put alarms in automatically for you. Uh, let's go ahead and just delete the alarm. I didn't delete it, but uh, let's see here. Align dude, what's going on? Yes, yes. Das, very helpful. Was looking through the VODs in your YouTube videos last weekend and couldn't really find talking about the mods you used. Yeah, Naka Flocka, I don't focus on the mods a lot. I focus on the mission and I show you how the mods use it. So the things aren't really categorized as to the mod that I was using. It's categorized as to the mission I was accomplishing. Das, have you done re-entry and landing close to KSC lately? Cthulhu and Dreams, I will do that for you. I will do that for you. Derpologist, what's going on? Yes, Adel, that is a great that is a great comment as well. That is a great comment as well. RD Wolf, welcome to the stream. Don't welcome, don't recognize your name any either. What's going on here? Okay, so now we can just go ahead and do the warp. And I am just going to warp around, y'all. <laughs> warp around. Warp 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 around. Warp up, warp up, and get down. There we go. We're going out to meet the moon. We are gonna have that coming up in one day. Let's get there faster than that. Let's get there faster than that. There's the moon. Whoa! <laughs> you like that curveball I threw at the moon? There's 20 seconds out of the SOI. Let's go ahead and delete that alarm. We don't need it anymore. If you click that, it'll just clean up the alarm, basically. There's that. And we are just about to cross into the moon's SOI. You can see that because of this. 13, 12. Wow, I don't know what is wrong with me being all blinky and my eyes not being in too good of a shape. Kajsing! Catch thing. What's going on in Sherman 12 -0? Guys. Oh, wrong account. <laughs> I hope you followed me with both both accounts. That's all I have to say about that. You and your alt. <laughs> what is up, Sherman and Kaj Singh? Welcome. I'm doing a help desk right now. Somebody asked about the most efficient way to land on the moon, and that's not it. A periapse of 9 kilometers is not good. We want it to be lower. Remember, if you're approaching a planetary body and you want to lower your periapse, you want to dip lower into the atmosphere for an atmospheric uh, aero break or something like that, you can always just burn radial in. I'll show you how that works. Click on that so that it sticks. I'm pointed at the radial in marker, right? That means that I'm going to deflect my trajectory this way, right like that. When I do that, that's going to bring me closer to the planet just for minuscule amounts of delta V. In fact, watch this. 6, 10 meters per second of delta V. I want to make this about 4, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4. Look how fine control I have as well. I'll go down to 4, 3, 8 is fine. I shouldn't die from 3, 8, should I? Let's find out. Ooh, buddy, it's going to be close. It's going to be close. That's what we want, though. That's what we want. So we'll see how to do this landing at the moon. And that was 2 meters per second of delta V to affect six kilometers in my periaps two meters per second adult v to affect six kilometers so do it early do it while you're still out here don't wait till you're down there it'll cost you more but that radial in that little circle with the inward pointing lines means deflect my orbit inwards towards the planet inwards towards the planet and that's a really great way to fine-tune your arrow brakes it's even better it's even better Arbrimer, you know you don't have to ask just put a link in there man put a link in there <laughs> 
Put a link, dude. You know you don't have to. Especially you, our rumor. You are always here, and I do appreciate you. So now we've got that. We can actually... Uh, let's use alarm clock again. Let's come over here and add an alarm right there at our Perry apps. Bing! Add maneuver. And we're going to say that we want uh, this alarm. Here's right Here I'm using this trick, right? Kerbal alarm clock. Add alarm. It automatically figures out that the maneuver node's there. I'm going to do this five minutes in advance of this node. Add alarm. One hour, 27 minutes, 35 seconds. Let's see how this works. I'm also going to F5 for safety. I can delete the maneuver node. I can close down Kerbal alarm clock. And I can come out here and I can F5 for safety. And how is old Ilaren doing? You're doing good, Ilaren. Good job. Good job. Yeah, Brummer. No, dude, you're good. Anytime. You can post any sort of KSP related stuff on my channel, man. You can definitely do that. I love people that show off the missions they've done and that sort of stuff. I really love seeing that stuff. It makes me happy to see people's mission reports and see people get excited about KSP. That really does make me happy. Let me see here. And I will do that while I'm going towards the moon. Wow, that thing has like almost no wings. It's cool that it's like a top, uh, like, a, like a high wing design too. What's that called? It's got the under engine. Oh, that's the rocket. Oh, that's really cool. I do like that. I like that design. It's got. The, I love how you tilted it to show off the, uh, the docking bay. You've got one turbojet engine, which is great because you don't have to worry about flame out, right? You've got two little OP engines, which is also great. I see you've got RCS so you can dock the thing. I love the high intakes. That looks really freaking cool. That is a little nice space plane. Congratulations. That thing looks really great. Are those fuel tanks? Are the are the engines angled, or is it just the way that I'm looking at it? It almost looks like those engines are angled a little bit in the back. But thanks for sharing the space plane, man. I appreciate it. Frankenfinger, Das, thanks to you, I've been slowing, showing. I've been less throwing parts together, hoping they work, and more looking at thrust, lift, and mass to save on gas. Congratulations, Frankenfinger. That is exactly why we have engineer on the screen. <laughs> that is exactly why we have engineer. Your Skylab's broken, <laughs> Ryan Wolf. Your Skylab's broken. Or it's 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 not historically accurately broken. <laughs> it's not historically accurate. One of those solar panels should be having trouble extending. Remember? <laughs> Let's go ahead and time warp on down because I still need to do this landing. I've got about 35 minutes, 40 minutes left in the stream. So let's go on down towards the moon and see if I can't not die. See if I can't not die. And I did use a 909 on here. I used dual 909s because I wanted it to be not OP. I wanted it to look like a nice, easy rocket. That's what I wanted to do. I'm coming on down here, and I am going to fix this. I do need to put in a chat beacon. I do need to put in a chat beacon. I love all the links that people put in, but I do need to put in a chat beacon. I will come back to those things. Um, I do appreciate the links, but let me get the landing here done, and I will scroll back, and I'll check out those links. I really love when people come into my channel and post things that they are excited about, because that makes me excited, too. Chat beacon! I don't like that command. <laughs> I like just doing the chat vegan. <laughs> I don't need a command for that. Tildes, get on my nerves. <laughs> All right, here we're coming into the moon. Delete on close. Wow, did I time that well or not? Let's see how we're looking. Are we crashing into the moon? Ooh, girl, we're crashing into the moon. We're totally crashing into the moon. Hmm. Well then, that's a problem. 749, that's going to be about 70 seconds of burn at this. <laughs> yeah, dude, Bremer, upload that thing to Kerbal X and put a link in the channel here, man. I really like that SSTU. Upload it. Upload it. I need to fix this just a little bit. I don't want to crash into that crater quite so hard. That looks good. All right, there, we're just barely skimming the surface. And what are we going to do? I'll show you how to do this. I'm going to do these calculations on the fly. Engineer can help you out with this. Engineer can help you out. But I'm going to do them live. Here's what I want. I want to basically come to a stop when I'm at my periaps. My periaps being very close to the surface of the planet or moon. It's actually going to be a little high because we're over that crater. But I basically want to come to a stop. I've got a very low periaps. If I had done it right, I could have left that lower, but I'm going to give myself a little wiggle room here. I'm going to F5 for safety, and I want to come to a stop when I get there. How do I accomplish that? How does that work? I'm actually going to put a node here 
add maneuver. I'm going to drag it full retro like that until it starts going haywire. And this is a quick, simple calculation the game will help me with. It says that when I get to that point, I'm going to be going 858 meters per second. 0.85 kilometers per second. That's pretty darn fast. That's pretty darn fast. But that is telling me that I need to start burning 85, da 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 10.4 meters per second, about half that time. So it's going to take me 85 seconds to come to a stop. Because look at this. That's why I have the acceleration here in Engineer. 10.44. I can decelerate at 10 meters per second. 10.44 meters per second. To decelerate from 850 meters per second down to 0 meters per second is going to take me 85 seconds, right? 84, 80, 850 divided by 10. So about... 45 seconds before my periaps, I'm gonna start the burn and see if I can keep from dying. See if I can keep from dying. That does make sense. The mod icon should be a hammer. That makes sense. I am streaming later, Hello Killer. I am definitely streaming later. So, about 45 seconds from my periaps, or 45 seconds from that node, I'm gonna start this burn. And I hope that my thrust weight is high enough to not die here. Let's see what we've got. This is a little bit low thrust weight for this maneuver. Mods cut things off, they don't bash it. Sometimes they bash things. Uh, Zubatsky, you should probably wait for the best transfer window. It depends. Are you time limited for some reason? Is there some time limiting factor that means that you need to get there in a certain amount of time? Are people going to die? Is there some contract that's going to expire? Um, you can always shop around in the transfer window planner and gauge delta V versus time, right? Date of departure, delta V time. Those are your three variables you see in the transfer window planner. What did I say? I need to burn 45 seconds out. Wow, that crater! I'm not going to hit that, am I? Let's have a look. Woo, buddy, I hope I don't hit that crater rim. It's looking like we might. <laughs> One way to find out. When this gets to 85, I said 45 seconds. I may die before 45 seconds, y'all. We shall see. It looks like I'm just barely going to miss the rim of the crater. Yeah, I feel. This is just this is just something you feel. I feel like I'm barely going to miss the rim of the crater. Yeah. Yeah, a good way to look at it is to point at your retrograde and look straight up your rocket like this. And I am going to miss the rim of that crater. Y'all saw the rim of that crater there, right? What is that? Hmm. So I, it looked like I was going to hit it, but I'm just looking straight up the rocket. And I'm going to start burning when I get to 45 seconds. And y'all watch how this works. Right here, 45, start the burn. Check out how low I am. I am very low. I am burning off all this. There is a suborbital flight now. I honestly don't like looking at it this way, so I'm going to go back to Freel work, and I'm going to keep burning right like this, and this is just a feeling thing. This is the most efficient way to land on the moon, but this is just a feeling thing. Do you see how I'm going to hit that? I am absolutely positively going to hit that. That's not a good thing, but I'm bleeding off the speed with a quickness. I am definitely bleeding off speed with a boot camp giveaway hype. <laughs> That's from a boot camp. I usually do boot camp giveaways. So you can see, I'm slowing down. I'm also falling towards the planet. When I start to fall towards the planet, I need to burn up a little bit. I feel like I'm still okay. I'm not going to crash and die yet. 90 meters per second left in this. Our thrust to weight will go up when we ditch this engine and tank. So we're at 12 now. That's good. Ditch that. That thing can explode. It can crash into the crater. Gear check. There goes the gear. And now I'm just going to keep on burning like this until I am falling straight down. Two ways to check it. That gets the top of that ball, or my vertical speed goes like that. There we go. That's what we wanted to see. That's at the top of the nav ball now. And now I just need to not crash into the moon too fast. I actually don't have my landing screen up. I think I'll be okay, though, because this little lander can flare, flare, flare. All right, like that, the little lander that could. All right, now you need to go a little bit faster than that, buddy. Where's my shadow? There's my shadow. And when we get down here, we want to flare, 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 and land. Like that. No big deal. So, <laughs> that's the most efficient landing that you can do on an atmospheric body. Try to get a periapse that's very low to the planet. Right? Very low to the planet. It doesn't really matter if it has an atmosphere, because you'll probably hit terminal velocity. But a non-atmospheric body, get a periapse that's very low to the planet, just like that. Keep it horizontal so that you're flying in sideways just like that and burn 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 
when it's about half the time to the node that you set right there at the periaps. That's going to make you start falling right down at the planet. And I was what? I was probably 500, 800 meters up. I didn't actually have a landing thing up. But that is the most efficient way to land on a planet. Rolling pin hype. <laughs> Thanks for the help. That is what we wanted to do. And why? Why is that the most efficient? Check it out. Why is that the most efficient way to do it? That is the most efficient way to do that landing because it gives the gravity of the planet the least possible amount of time to act upon us. A suicide burn would probably be a little bit more efficient, but that is a manageable sort of suicide burn. Whoa! <laughs> Screen! Lots of stuff! Jeez, oh Pete. Um, what we're doing by coming in at a very low angle, we had all that orbital velocity. We were like a kilometer up. We were going 850 meters per second, and we did not give that gravity any time whatsoever to act upon us, because every second that gravity is acting upon you, it's taken Delta V out of your tanks. Every second that that moon pulls you towards it faster and faster, that is Delta V you're going to have to spend to counteract that so that you can land. So, by giving the moon very little time to act on me, as opposed to, you know, coming to a complete stop and then falling straight down sort of deal, if you do something like that, that gives the moon a whole heck of a lot of time to add additional, add additional stuff to you. All we had to do was just come in at a very low periaps there and then slam on it. And I didn't show you some of the stuff. I didn't show you some of the stuff. If I felt like I was going to start crashing, I would have pointed up and I would have burned up. And that would have, even if I was still going 800 meters per second, I would have flown along the surface of the planet, giving me more time to, to slow down. I would have actually changed my trajectory up and down to balance decelerating versus not dying, right? <laughs> if I'm going to die, I need to point up. And if I need to slow down, I go like that. Um, that came in just fine. That was a great landing. The moon boot giveaway hype. You've seen that I've done this before because I landed 5.3 kilometers away from the site that I landed before. Anyways, we had another question. Mono Bobby, th or, uh, there you go. That's a lot. Going to give you that a go on your next trip to the moon. Mono Bobby, you need that thrust to weight. You need that thrust to weight. Remember my acceleration was 10 meters per second. If you have a very low thrust to weight, that maneuver is very difficult to pull off. It's very difficult to pull off. Um, so make sure you have a pretty good thrust to weight. I think this thrust to weight back in the VAB, mm, I don't know what it is off the top of my head. Just make sure you have the thrust to weight because that and suicide burns are very difficult to pull off if your thrust to weight is too low. Um, somebody had asked about landing at the KSC, so I will do that. I will do that. <laughs> so no need for that haircut. You're right. We didn't need it. Yes, I answered that one. Did I miss anything else? It was just thrown together. Oh, <laughs> gotcha. What else? What else? What else? The chat bacon. Sayakon, what's going on? Let me look at these links right quick. Whoa, that thing looks cool. Intake hog! <laughs> Darth Lazarus. Cheaty McCheaterson there. Hogging all those intakes at the front of your SSTO. <laughs> ah, yes. My first working SSTO. See, that looks like an actual plane. That looks a lot like the one we made the other day. I like it. I like it. You had a little bit of flex on the wings there. That's why you have the struts in. I like that one. That is a, that is a cool looking SSTO. You may have... Those better be aero spikes. Yeah, those are aero spikes. I was going to chew you out for your rear-facing Draggy McDraggerson intakes. Oh, are you intake hogging? You're intake hogging too. Look at you stacking intakes on stop of intakes, Rian Wolf. How? <laughs> Wolf heart arrow. I like the I like the icon at the top. It uses fuel wings. Oh, okay. There was Sayakon. All right, going through. First birth samurai. Oh, friend to bear the samurai actually. Oh, codes. What did you upload? That is quite a ladder. You've oh, it's a it's an eclipse. That's quite a ladder you've got going down there. Oh, codes. I like it. Boot camp this weekend. Yes, oh, Shotzel. You could be changing something else. Ah, Sarah, it's all good. <laughs> To use a tiny SSTO. Probably was answered. Yes, I am streaming later. How do you save parts as a subassembly, container thrusters, and SAS as a whole? Frankenfinger. Hold down Alt. Click on the part that you want to make a subassembly, and all the root, no, the parts underneath it, and go to the subassembly tab and drag them over there. I can show you that in the VAB right quick. Let me see what else I have to do here. Um. Beautiful rolling pin. Okay, I'll do that in the VAB. I've got two things to answer in the VAB. I've got how do I copy parts and how do I do that. So I will go back to the VAB and do that. Let me put it in my text editor so that I know what the plan is. It is sub assembly and rolling pin. 
that's what I'll do next. I've got about 20 minutes left. If I'm going to in orbit, let's see here. Constant altitude landing explanation. Nice, Dos. That actually helped me land on Tyler without a lot of problems. Moonchild! It, no, is it Moonchild or Moon Chili? <laughs> I don't know. Or is it Moon Double O? Moo Double O. Is it Moo in Chili? <laughs> Maybe it's like Milk and Chili, sort of. That's your name. <laughs> it's the good old accelerating versus not dying ratio. <laughs> it's the Dos equation. The balance of accelerating versus not dying. Decelerating, actually. Durbelage, not going to play a different game right now. Doing a help desk. Ah, yes. I can do this to an economical orbit. Yes, Rian Wolf. Um, if you go into an orbit, if you go into an orbit, and you're in a circular orbit, it doesn't really matter where you burn. So go into a circular orbit, burn so that your periaps, which will be on the opposite side of the planet, is very close down to the planet just like that. Um, could I show you that? Do I have time to do that? And then I'll go back to the VAB. Let me see here. Going from an equatorial polar orbit. Whoa, what? That's, Goalie Bear, that's a lot of big questions. I will highlight those. Um, I don't think I'm going to have time on this stream to get to them, but I will highlight them for you, Goalie Bear, so that I remember them and I answer them in the future. Um, so let me do this. What's up, Hokey, by the way? So let me show you the other way to do this, right? Let me go ahead. I'm going to F9. Ding, 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 ding. Till I was doing this, and I'll show you how to go into, like, a 10K orbit. All right, here we go. I don't want to do this. I'm actually going to burn. I'm going to give myself quite a bit of uh, radial out right now. I'm just going to set this up so I can show you doing the same maneuver from orbit. Let's just set this up to like 10. Let's burn a little delta V here. No big deal. So I'll set this up to around 9. There's 10. Now we're definitely not going to die. And we're going to go into an orbit right here at the periaps. We're going to add a maneuver. We're going to remove orbital energy. And we're going to go into a circular orbit around the moon. Bing! That's roughly circular. 24, come on. Come on back. There you go. I was just clicking and holding down. That's my trick there. There's the flip. That's a 9-2. Come on. There you go. 10 by 10. Looks good. It's going to be 278.4 meters per second to go into this orbit. Let's see how quickly we can get it done. Here's another alarm clock trick. Here's another alarm clock trick. Alarm clock. My burn time, 26 seconds. What can I do? I can add an alarm for that node, but I can put it half of my burn time. Sneaky, huh? 13 seconds. I'm actually going to do 15 seconds. And that means that as soon as I get to this alarm, it's going to be time for me to burn. Watch. I'm going to go ahead and time warp down to it. Still answering this question about how to do this from orbit. There you go. The alarm's going to pop. Delete on close. Close alarm. Now it's time to burn. Burn, 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 burn. So I didn't even have to wait or anything. I could just go straight from there. I know. I need to update alarm clock. Yes. Yes. That is what I need to do. I know. Hey, look. A lunar arch. That's cool. That are the landing sites down there. Let's land back at this lunar arch since it's in the daylight. And I'm going to go ahead and cut engines right when I go circular. Bing! Right like that. 10 by 8. Periaps is a little bit too low. Let me fix that because I should be at my apo right now. Yes, I am. I burned just a millisecond too long. So I should just be able to go like this. 9, 9, 5, 9, 7, 9, 8, 9, 9, 10. That's a circular orbit. So let's show how to land back here. What I want to do now, I want to land at this crater using that same sort of shenanigan I did, right? Go to the opposite side of the planet. You can double click on the planet to focus on it. That makes it easier. I want to land at this crater. So I'm going to go to the opposite side of the planet. Because I'm circular, it doesn't matter about my periaps or apoaps. And right there, I'm going to create a maneuver node that has me fly into the planet like this. That periaps of 8. Ooh, buddy, that's a little low. There we go. And see, it's not, the periaps isn't exactly where I want to be. So I'm going to click on this and I'm going to drag it around. And I want to land like right there. Ish. Right? That periaps, 4, 6. We could go a little lower than that. So let's take a little bit more energy out. 3, 7. That's going to crash us into the crater. In fact, let me show you how not to die. Um, that seems like an important thing to teach. This right here is going to make me crash. I don't want to crash into that. I'll show you how to fix it. I'll show you how to fix it. So look at this. This deorbit burn from this altitude in this situation is going to cost me 4.3 meters per second. 
I could sneeze that much meters per second. Let's go ahead and add an alarm. Let's go ahead and do that. It's going to be an almost nil burn, so I'm just going to set it 10 seconds out. Add alarm. There we go. And we can just go ahead and fast forward. Look at that moon going by. Hello, moon. My old friend. Ah, yes. The moon. Hey, there's another landing site. Love it. I'm just going to burn retrograde because I'm circular. It doesn't matter where I burn. Like that. And it's just going to be a teeny tiny little burn here. So that my berry apps comes to be right about there. Let's start burning right now. And... That's what death looks like. Do you see how we interact? <laughs> we interact lithally with a planet there? <laughs> that is a litho interaction that I'm going to have to solve. So I'll show you how to solve this. This is an important skill to have. We'll go ahead and just put a maneuver node right here. Again, using the alarm clock trick, I will add an alarm one minute out. And I will delete that node because I don't need it. Now I will set an alarm. Eh, right there. Add maneuver. What is this? Basically... Basically, let's see, how much is this going to cost me? I'm going to drag until it goes down. There we go. 574, so it's going to be about 60 seconds. It's going to be about 60 seconds to burn this out. And I'm going to be right there around 10 again. I've got a little bit less. 10, 11, that's about 60 seconds. Just roughly, right? I'm, giving, I'm rounding up to give myself some padding. That's totally what I'm doing. So about 60 seconds out, I am going to start that burn. If I don't die first. Let's see how this works. I'm just going to watch it, and let's go for this. Alrighty. Ah, uh, yes, thank you, Artek. I am feeling better. That moon landing. That's what we're doing. I hope I'm getting sick. A litho. <laughs> Excessive litho interaction. Look at old Kerbin rising there. That's beautiful. This game is so cool just because it generates... There's something about planets in space that's just awesome. Let me go ahead and uh, bring up my landing helper here. We'll get rid of the node and we'll go for the uh, landing helper there. Kerbal Engineer, I love you. Folks, Cybertech was in the channel earlier. Cybertech is the maker of Kerbal Engineer, and I could not do this without Kerbal Engineer. I probably could. It just wouldn't be as uh, nearly as effective. Because Kerbal Engineer peeks behind the curtains and shows you what's happening on a number basis. Look at this flight over the dark side of the moon. We've just come into daylight here. I love it. Five minutes, four minutes, three minutes. Oh, come on now. Look at us flying over the surface. Isn't that great? I mean, what's our altitude? 4,000? 4, 4,000 meters. 30, yeah, it's going up and down based on the craters that we're going over and over and stuff. That's awesome. Chad is scrolled down, right? Yeah, there we go. F5. Hmm. Heavy decon, what's going on? Here comes the alarm. Excellent day. And now I'm just going to orient for success. I'm going to orient such that I don't burn to death and die. Let's just go ahead and do this. Let me show you how to tell if you're going to die or not in this situation. We can actually get rid of the alarm clock. We can do that. Right like that. And. Yeah. Alright, we still have quite a ways to go. So I can't time warp much faster than that. Can't time warp faster than 1x. <laughs> That's dumb. It's physical warp then. Fine, I'll physical warp. See if I care. See if I can illustrate this well. There's, a, there's so much feeling in this maneuver, right? And feeling is such a hard thing to teach. You just have a feel for it. You're like, ah, man, I'm gonna die. I should probably not do that. I don't. It's so hard to teach that sort of stuff. But anyways, here's how I can tell if I feel like I'm going to die. I'm gonna point my craft retrograde like that, and I'm gonna look along the craft, right? Right now, I don't feel like I'm gonna die, but I feel like up here, when I start to curve around here, I feel like I'm gonna die. I'll show you when I begin to feel like I'm going to die, and show you how to fix it. That's really all that I can say about it. That really is all that I can say about it. I'll show you how I know when I feel like it's dying time, and then I'll show you what to do. Number one thing is don't panic, right? Don't panic. 
Because you've got your towel with you. There's no reason to panic. But look, just keep pointing retrograde like that. And when your rocket begins to point at a hard surface, that's when you begin to feel like you're going to die. <laughs> that's when you begin to feel like you're going to die. And with this maneuver, you can fix it. And I'll show you in the map screen how it gets fixed. But again, it's going to be about 60 seconds. So it's 30 seconds before that node. And I have a feeling that before them, I'm going to feel deathly. I'm going to begin getting cold chills. Voices are going to start talking to me. There'll be a light that I'm supposed to be going to. That is what we're going to be doing. But watch. I continue pointing retrograde. Right down here, I'm just pointing retrograde. And it's, you could actually use this as well. That right there... See the retrograde marker. Wait a second, that's weird. Oh, I'm pointing retrograde. See the prograde marker? When the prograde marker basically sets on a solid surface, that's a good way to know that your impending doom is arising. We're not there yet. We've got to curve around a little bit more, but pretty soon that prograde marker is going to set. That prograde marker is going to set. And you can see, I feel like I'm going to die. Right? Look at me. I'm like 300 meters off the deck. What you've got to do right then is burn straight up. Don't freaking panic. Just burn straight up right like that. What did that do? That bought me some time. I flew over the lip of that crater. Did you see how it was? It happened so fast, but I was 300 meters off the deck. I was, my retrograde marker was setting, or actually my prograde marker was setting, and I burned radial out, burned towards the sky. If you're doing one of these landing maneuvers, you need more time to think, burn towards the sky. The sky is your friend. Up is your friend, not the surface of the planet is your friend. That is the direction in which you should be burning if you feel like you're going to die. Let's go ahead and uh, start this burn right now. Now that we're 30 seconds, T minus 30 seconds. Did everybody catch that? I know it happened really fast. I know it happened really fast. Um, I definitely saved myself. You see how high I am now. I didn't even need to burn as much as I did, but I was trying to, uh, I was trying to illustrate what was going on. Oh, there goes that stage. Let's ditch it. I love how fast it shoots away. It just looks cool. And that's going to make me fall down. But that the way that I burned that made it not as efficient of a landing. I should have come in with more velocity, and then my alarm went off, and I was reading my alarm because it's telling me I've got T-10 minutes before I've got in the stream. So that really right there wasn't the most efficient landing because I killed too much velocity while I was catching my alarm. But anyways, you can still do the landing, right? Just go ahead and do this. We'll just go ahead and do a non-ideal landing here. The moon is pulling me down. My impact time, 25 seconds. Velocity, 100. 16. 100 divided by 16, that means it's going to be about 5, 7 seconds for me to kill this velocity off. So when I get down to impact 7 seconds, I guess I'll go ahead and try to burn. We'll see how well I did that calculation in my head. It's 10, 9, 8, 7. Burn, 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 burn. Burn, buddy, burn. Come on. Come on. Come on. Don't die me. There you go. Whoopsie. Yeah, we didn't die. We hardly died. That wasn't even close to dying. Where's my shadow? Woo, buddy, we're on the lip of a crater. <laughs> That's okay. There's my shadow. So good to see your shadow. My old friend. And we're just going to not hit the moon too fast. Seven, six, five. Or you have two landing legs up the hill like that. Take off! Don't panic! It's all good. It's all good. Don't panic. That's the last thing you want to do. Let's just let's coast down the hill here. We've got the Delta V to do this. Watch. Let's just coast down the hill. Let's go find a better landing spot. Step one, orient dorsal side so you know what's going on. There we go. Don't panic. Don't panic when stuff like that happens. That's the thing that kills so many people, is the panicking. You don't want to panic. It's bad for you. We're on the moon! We're on the moon. Okay, um, I have two more things. Wow, and I've got to do it really quickly. I've got to do it really quickly. <laughs> I need to get home. I need to get home. Sorry, that was not the most efficient landing because I overburned. I overburned. Um, but let's get home right quick. I only have a couple minutes to do this, and then I've got to get going. I've got to get going. Let's see here. Da, 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 da. Let's get home. Mooner ejection needs to be retrograde. That is actually not bad. 
Let's just do the Moonary Ejection live. It looks like if I burn... Hmm. Not quite straight at the sun. Let's just eject ourselves from this planet right quick. I need to eject myself retrograde, which means that I need to eject myself this way. Kerbin in the background. This way is the way that I need to leave the planet. I just need to burn that way until I leave the planet. I can do that by pointing mostly up. So let's go ahead and go like that. And go like this. Put those gear up. I didn't even plant a flag. Ain't nobody got time for that. Um, yes, I'm going the right way. Oops, I'm not going the right way. Let's go this way. I was pointed at 45 and not 90. So now I'm going to overcorrect like this. And then I'm going to point 90 once my little marker got to 90. A little bit more. There we go. Okay, now let's just look at this. Ah, do you see that straight line? I like that straight line. I want that line to go straight. I want it to keep going straighter and straighter and straighter until I eject from this planet. So watch. Watch how this works. I'm just going to keep... This isn't a, minimi, a minimum energy ejection, by the way. This is a more than minimum ejection. There we go. And I'm just going to eject myself straight. Watch what happens. You see my periaps going down? That periaps is going down because I'm leaving the moon in this direction. I'm leaving the moon retrograde, which is what I want to do. Now all we need to do is just time warp because I am definitely short on time. That is what you want your ejection to look like, though. Backwards along the moon. Backwards along the moon. Take it easy, Tack. Straighter! Straighter! <laughs> Folks, if you've asked questions recently, I will go over it. I will go over... Um, I won't be able to answer all the questions. I do need to end the stream here in just a couple minutes. I've got somewhere to be. A long way to go and a short time to get there. So let's focus on the craft and let's get it home. I'm going to warp through this SOI change. I don't really care. There we go. Uh, somebody had asked me if I'd done a targeted landing at the KSC. I will have to do that another time. That's going to take me a little bit of time, right? That's going to take me a little bit of time to do. Uh, Barry, a mostly minimum ejection is starting to burn on the opposite side of the planet. Not going straight up like that, but burning on the other side. Here we go. So a mostly minimum ejection would be me burning on the other side of the planet. I don't want to burn so much that I have to burn more to go straight. Basically, as soon as I break that sphere of influence, you know you get the leaving the moon sphere of influence, I want that point to be pointing straight back just as soon as that happens just as soon as that happens. That is the minimum energy transfer to get out of Kerbin's Sphere of Influence. Or sorry, the Moon's Sphere of Influence. Or any pl planetary body, really. Don't do this if you have a deadly reentry. I'm just doing it in the interest of time. Streamer's prerogative. Wow. That's nuts, though. Using that engine as a news... We were just there. We were just at the Moon. Total mission lapse time, 2 days, 4 hours, 44 seconds, and we are about to come in for a landing. Sonic boom! There's that. And I'm just gonna wait. I could do a powered landing, I guess. I don't have time for it, though. I need to get back to the VAB and answer a couple more questions. Uh, I did just I did just answer that one, Barry. I did just answer that one. It's basically when you break the moon sphere of influence, you want it to be pointed back. It's kind of hard to demonstrate out loud. It's kind of hard to describe out loud, I guess I should say. But, uh... Hmm. That is what it is. That was probably around 30 Gs. 17.7. <laughs> we don't need any of this stuff. I'm just going to get down to about 2,000 and then ditch the stage, pop the chute, and call it a day. Um, Barry, I can illustrate that one another time. I'm pressed for time right now. I do have to end the stream at a specific time. I have a hard stop. But I can demonstrate that another time for you. I can demonstrate. I will be more than happy to demonstrate that another time for you. There we go. Dude, Big Jess, what's going on? Eve return mission you did a while ago. Woo! You were pointing... Oh, which was thanks. Oh, <laughs> sorry, Barry. I didn't see the thanks highlighted. That just exploded. I didn't see the thanks highlighted. I saw The only thing I saw was the highlighted text, which was above it. Uh, crafty Gamer, I can do suicide, burn, suicide burns another time. I'm out of time for now. Um, thanks for the awesome... Okay, we've got that one. Pointing... Yep, got that one. Quickly explain what the different lines in the map mean. Ooh, Alban. <sighs> That's going to take me some time. It's basically what orbit you're in. Blue is your orbit or current orbit. Tan is your next orbit. If the orbit is dotted, that means it's, it's a resulting trajectory after... Get on down there. After a uh, maneuver node. So blue is your current orbit. Brown is your... Tan is your next orbit. Um, purple is your orbit after that. If it's dotted, that means it's after a maneuver node. That's kind of what I have to say about that. Um, hmm. Come on. 
Sploosh! Recover! Quick to the VAB! We've got to get there right quick. Somebody asked about a rolling pin of science using very basic parts. And then, KSE landing. Um, I, I will cover that one. I'm sorry, Cthulian, I didn't have time to squeeze that in. Uh, but I will cover that for you later. If you can be on later when I start up my stream later, it should be about 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And I will cover that for you. Coming up in about four and a half hours. I, I apologize. Um, I don't have a specific highlight of that on YouTube, I don't believe. Dude, C sends Mark Enfeld and Radium Skull. Thanks for the follows, y'all. I have one more thing to demonstrate. I have a couple minutes to demonstrate in it, and then I've got to get going. So blue, tan, purple. Yeah, Albin, that's that's right. And if it's dotted, that's after a maneuver node. It's a planned trajectory, not another trajectory. If you've just started a career, <laughs> this is the most hilarious thing ever. In fact, this is easier to do from the. Uh, Space Lane Hangar, AkMakD, or AmicD, thanks for the follow. Welcome to Kerbal Space Academy. I'm doing a help desk right now. Anytime you see help desk in my stream, Mona, what's going on? Anytime you see help desk in my stream, it means that I am answering questions. So if you've got questions about Kerbal Space Programming, come on over here and ask them of me because I will answer them for you. So we are talking about the rolling pin of science. If you don't have rover parts yet, but you have science parts, here is what you can do. You can actually get a pod you can get another, more different pod. You can put science in between them. You can do wacky things like this, such as using some sort of small structural segment. If you've got these unlocked, I think this is one of the last things you unlocked. But I think you can use these, whatever you unlock earlier. I can't remember what they are. <laughs> Anyways, just some small diameter part. Let's just say some small diameter part in the interest of time. I will do that. I will go back to my science. I will put these on in 2x symmetry. Quick tip for the space landing hangar. If you rotate your stuff, you can actually use 2x symmetry twice. Hey, oh man, I can't get it because of those. That's lame. Anyways, you get the point. You can put more of these on here. That other guy, don't spam my channel, man. Come on now. Seriously, people are trying to learn here. <laughs> Anyways, um, you've got these things. Let's just toss these on right quick. My alarm is going off again, which means that it is time for me to be saying goodbye. I can snooze that. All right, 30 minutes to get out of here, or 30 minutes to get there. You get the point, though. I've got some science. I've got some other, more different science. I could put whatever science experiments I have in here. I could put the thermometers or whatever, right? Put science in there. Launch it. I call this the rolling pin of science. If you don't have, if you don't have rover parts yet, you can still rove around and get science using this. It would also be helpful to have some solar panels on here. But with the rolling pin of science, you can actually roll around. <laughs> totally. The shorter your rolling pin, the easier it will be to turn. But you can totally roll around the KSC, totally doing science. It's a legitimate strategy. It's easy to turn. That's one panel lock there. It's easy to turn when you're on a hill like this. So if you can get on a hill and you can torque yourself up in one direction, and sideways, let's do it like that. That should be torquing me up and turning. You can see it kind of happening there. There you go. You can torque yourself around until you turn and you can continue rolling around. If you don't have rover parts, this is completely legitimate strategy. Look at this, observing mystery grooves. You can get out and you can do surface samples if you need to. Don't EVA while it's rolling. You really don't need engineer for this. Solar panels and roving around during the head during the daytime would be great. But you can totally use this as a mechanism for getting science when you don't have rover wheels. Yeah, also, Tabakasi, that's a great one. Don't get going too fast. Don't only go about 10 meters per second. But you can definitely rove around carrying the science experiments to different locations, doing science with them. You can get the shores, you can get all the biomes at the KSC, you can get planes, you can get the hills a little bit. Eh, I wouldn't rove to the hills in this thing. But this is the rolling pin of science. If you don't have rover parts unlocked in your career, you can roll around like this doing science. It's a totally legitimate strategy. Some of the samples appear to be judging you. All right, I don't mind links, folks, but it's time for me to go. I've got to go now. I've got to go now. So I will, that was a rolling pin of science, I will see, <laughs> I will go, <clears throat> I don't know what that is, yeah, alright, if it's not KSC related, don't do that, it has to be KSC related, um, I have to go though, tutorials as for do Dino Man, how to land a space plane on lathe, I could probably do that later. 
Land at the poles, that's your trick there. Land at the poles, there's lots of great flat land at the poles on lathe. Minute orbit with my satellite, but I lost my solar panels. Ooh. Test my satellite communications. I'm not sure what you're asking there, Borbor. Um, maybe relaunch again, but put your solar. Make sure your solar panels are not extracted. Landing at the KSC. I've got that one, Cthulian. I do have that one. I will definitely do that one later. I do have to shut down the stream. I'm making sure I didn't miss anything else. What is the calculation for a suicide burn by Crafty Gamer? I'm totally ch copying these questions down. Color lines, I got those. Pointing it above, said good. Da, 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 da. I might have missed something else. Folks, if I missed something else, if I missed something else, I do have to go right now. Oh, yeah, they do break off. They do break off. Sorry, I saw you asked it. All right. Yes, I have to be going, guys. It is time for me to end my stream. I've got somewhere to go. Like I said, i got a long way to go and a short time to get there. So I will be back in about four hours. About four hours from now, I'll be doing another Kerbal Space Academy session. If you're interested in learning something, you have any more questions, come on by then. But for now, I do have to say goodbye. For real, Zos, I do have to say goodbye. I apologize for leaving so quickly. I'm Das Valdez. I do Kerbal Space Academy. I answer questions. I teach people things. That's kind of my thing. But I have to go for now. I appreciate y'all watching. I will be back later. I'm feeling much better. I appreciate the people who asked me about that. I appreciate all the support. Donations that come in, follows that came in, all that stuff that was happening. I really do appreciate it. And I will be going for now. Good games, y'all. Good games. I'll be back in about four hours. See y'all later.